Luck on Sunday. Proudly sponsored by Al Basti World Dubai. Well, I don't care how successful you've been. By anybody's standards, yesterday for Team Gosden was just one of those days. Just remarkable. Um, Hakiki winning the Lincoln in the colours of uh, Sheikh Hissa bin Hamdan. Um, we had the two horses in Dubai. Absolutely barnstorming performance from Lord N North. And then Mishrif proving what a warrior and a versatile warrior he is in the Dubai Shima Classic. Two wins at Kempton as well to boot, which won't probably be, be written about in the history books, but Global Giants, a very useful horse, and Kempton is exactly where John Gosden was and joins me on the line now. Morning, John. Morning, Nick. That was, um, as I said, that was a remarkable day. I don't, I don't care how high you set the bar. You must, I, I, I penny for them when you walked out of Kempton yesterday. No, I think you, you you set the bar too high. You normally wind up going walking underneath it. So, uh, no, look, it was an extraordinary day. Tremendous amount of work and planning gone into it with all of our team here at Clearhaven Stables. And uh, as they say, sometimes it comes off. Um, William Haggis, your, your near neighbour in, in Newmarket, said to me sort of with his tongue in his cheek a little bit earlier in the week, I think John will just win everything on Saturday. Had you sort of, had you sort of loaded the guns and wanted to make a big splash that first big Saturday of the season, or is it just the way things panned out? No, William's a good friend, and he seems to have the time to handicap my horses as well as his own. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. It's remarkable. But look, I went in there quite tentative about it all, because particularly with Mishra, because uh, I didn't like the fact that uh, Ben comes up so quickly and he was drawn wide and obviously we trained him to break sharply and race with the American horses in Riyadh at that kind of pace. And of course here it's, there's no run to the bend and I didn't want him getting exposed on the outside, discussed it at length with David and we basically decided together just to take, take a hold, drop him across and switch him off, which was entirely the right thing to do. So to know whether the horse properly stays a mile and a half and if he relaxes early and it answered our question, whereas I think if we'd gone a little gung-ho from the gate, we would have paid the price at the other end. But of course, because he was drawn so wide, this is how wide he had to come. He had no choice. When you were watching on here, we've got about 100 yards to run or 300 metres to run. What are you thinking? Well, I was, I was delighted that he dropped his head and relaxed the whole way around. Yes, he was forced to challenge wide around the second part of the bend. And these Japanese mares, they're tough. He seemed ahead of them and they were coming back at him. They've kicked away from the rest of the field, which is quite some, some sign. And, but he's a gutsy horse. And I thought the long straight he will really enjoy. As he, that's what won in the Saudi Cup, the long straight against Bob Baffert's horse. And he just really enjoys the battle. But uh, I think David rode him very wisely, switching him off. You can't get a mile and a half of the horses coming off a mile and an eighth on the dirt and expect them to stay a mile and a half. It's something that I've never tried before. Uh, it seems to have come off here, but uh, it's, he's, he's a very, very tough customer and a real character with it. Yeah, he's a very easy horse to warm to. You've got to, you're going to have another public horse on your hands, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, the Strad's got competition, yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a lovely horse and he's just very, very game and uh, he's incredibly idle in his work, which is probably a, a good thing in a horse. Uh, you watch him work in the morning, you say, who's that old handicapper? And he keeps the best for the afternoon. Uh, Lord North was, was really quite good yesterday. I, I said to you at Kempton, I know he was entitled to do what he did on ratings, but nonetheless, it's a lovely way of starting the season. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he was ahead on the ratings, definitely. He did fly down there last year, the old boy, and of course, he only there two days in the race. You know, everyone went to lockdown, UAE, the half the world, including us. So he didn't run, but he's shown his class here. He's, you know, the Prince of Wales, he skipped away from them. He wasn't happy with the ground at York, but uh, look, he's a, he's a grand horse and uh, with a wonderful attitude, and he's got this young kid riding him to Tory. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a, an excellent performance. Where are we likely to see him next? I would think back to the Prince of Wales would be quite a likely place you'd find him. Freshen up now for the summer. And what do you, what do, you do with Mishrif now? Well, I obviously discussed it with Prince Faisal, um, but it was always the plan to see if he could be an arc horse. And I think to, he proved that he, you know, he gets the mile and a half, and that was uh, they went quick to the bend and then they slowed it up and he finished well. So I think you again freshen uh, till the summer. My feeling would be races like the Eclipse, the Jabbond International, 
the Ark, the King George. Those those are the three or four races to be looking at and seeing where we are at the time. But that's a long way off. He deserves a pretty good holiday right now. Would you ever think about having a stab back on the dirt after after Saudi? Would you go to Breeders' Cup Classic or something like that? Well, as I slightly pointed out, having trained at Del Mar and had a lot of success there um, down the years, I do know that straight very well. Yeah. And I always feel that they should pick the wire, the finish line up, and take it another 100 yards down. It's a very short straight. Different style of racing. You know, the turf course even more so. You've got to have real tactical speed and just ping off the bend. This, as you saw, is a horse who enjoys the length of the straight of both. It's two and a half. It was two and a half furlongs that, in, in, in reality, enjoys the length of the straight here. And I don't think it's quite frankly going to suit him. The significance of Hakiki's victory was not lost on you yesterday. I don't think it was lost on, on many, but sometimes in this sport, things just have a way of, of happening. And in, in the week where we lost Sheikh Hamdan, and I know how popular he was with all his trainers and, and jockeys and everyone who worked with him and for him, to, to see his daughter Silks carry to victory by, by Benoit de la Sayette in the, in the Lincoln, it, it's, you can't write that sort of thing. Look, it was profoundly poignant and fulfilling. I mean... Sheikh Hamdan's loss is incalculable, I mean, in his own country, let alone children praying in, for in schools across Africa. You just don't know the amount of, uh, you know, phenomenal charity work and uh, that they do, uh, the Maktoum family, in other parts of the world. You never hear of that because they're, they're very low-key. It's, it's not something they shout from the rooftops about. But this is a man who did an awful lot in other places, let alone just uh, the UAE. And, and their enjoyment, always been for the Macdon family, of their recreation, if you like, is, is racing and breeding horses, thank goodness, based in the UK. And they have, for 40 years, been the backbone of our flat racing industry. And um, Hissa has, has been tweeting and saying what an emotional moment it was for, for her yesterday, uh, winning, winning the Lincoln. She clearly shares her, her late father's passion for the sport. Yes, very much, uh, Sheikh Issa has, has followed the horses extremely closely and knows them all inside out in their form. And she, she's followed very closely with her father for years. She would come privately to the yard uh, just with him to see horses. And, uh, and to that extent, uh, she's, she's highly intelligent and on the ball. And I think for her, it's a devastating loss, her father. But I know that he was... You know, he very much involved her in it, and I know he loved her being uh, involved and knowing the horses. So uh, yesterday, as I say, was poignant uh, in every sense of the word. I wanted just to round off by talking about the man who, who rode at Hakiki yesterday, Benoit de la Sayette. Again, we spoke a little at Kempton about him yesterday, but that looks a pretty sharp piece of scouting. How did he find his way into Clarehaven? A young man, you make him sound old already, he's only 18. <laughs> um, look, his parents uh, ha have been absolutely so much part of this. They took him England, France, pony racing, taught him everything in a sense. So when he came to me, the, the natural ability was there. I don't have a load of geldings to, for, for apprentices to learn on. But the rider was there, and then everything else has come with it in time. His father's a good friend of Frankie's, and it was Frankie who asked if he, he could come to us. and. He's, you know, he's a, he's a pleasure to work with. Uh, he's worked, ride, worked riding with Frankie and Rab and Martin and Nicky and Kieran, all the guys all the time. So he's, he's been with us really quite some time since he was, a, you know, school holidays. Yes, he's exceptionally talented. I'm particularly aware that I don't like to see apprentices rushed, mm. slightly used, abused and roared through uh, all of their allowances and then sort of suddenly just dumped. Uh, I've seen too much of that in the past. So... Paul Clark, his agent, works with Peter Schumacher, our racing office manager, and he'll be, we'll try and manage it all very carefully and, uh, and do what's right and prudent for, for a young jockey who's, who's hopefully got a, a good career, a long career ahead of him. But he certainly won't be riding every left, right and centre every day uh, and burning himself out by August. That wouldn't be very clever. So it's not, it's not something that was a sort of premeditated move to go out and find the next great talent, to find the next Dottori. It sort of arrived by sort of happy accident, really. No, it's very much through uh, his father is uh, a charming man and mother. And they, they basically have done all of the tough work, if you like. Uh, but he's, he's, he's very balanced on a horse, beautiful hands. Uh, he's just a natural he does very much be part of the horse. You watch him in a finish. He's, 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 he's very stylish, but uh, and he's look. He's but he's a young kid, and he's got an awful lot to learn, and he's got to keep his feet on the ground. So, 
it, it, it evolved uh, through Frankie and his father being good friends, as simple as that. Uh, now, where is your co-trainer as we speak? He's uh, heading to Florida for the two-year-old in training <laughs> sale. Um, he's uh, going to look at some horses there. He says he's got a client who knows he'll be taking over soon. I, I can see the way this dynamic's going. He was in Dubai yesterday. He's on his way to Florida. You and I were at Kempton. Yeah. I'd be happy with you. Abu. <laughs> you know, we'll do a bit of Wolverhampton <laughs> together. We'll be happy. Uh, but it, it must have been uh, lovely for, for the family to have you both on the license this weekend and for it all to start in such sort of, well, extraordinary fashion, really. Yeah, you couldn't have choreographed it if you tried. It was meant to be January the 1st, actually, for the whole year. But obviously, with the, the modules got put behind by COVID and uh, everything else. So it's, it's happened by the beginning of the turf season, which is great. Now, I don't think we quite planned this. Uh, it, look, it came to fruition. But uh, look, if we'd had won one of those races, you'd be overjoyed. They're very hard to win. And everybody who trains and owns horses knows how difficult it is to get things absolutely spot on on the day. Thanks, John. Thank you now. Subscribe to Racing TV to be notified when more Luck on Sunday videos are appearing online. And don't forget to join me for the show every Sunday morning from 9 o'clock with the best guests.